Thanks for choosing ABC 15 News at 10 this Sunday night. I'm Danielle Lerner and we have big new developments in the Hacienda Healthcare investigation. We have just learned the board there at Hacienda Healthcare has hired former Maricopa County Attorney Rick Romley to lead an internal investigation after a 29 year old patient unable to speak or move on her own for years gave birth to a baby last month. Now the facility claims they didn't know she was pregnant. As investigators continue working to find out who assaulted her, our own John Treeweiler has been digging into the facility's past. John, I know there were a lot of documents involved in this. What have you learned? There were, Danielle. First of all, our ABC 15 investigative team, they first exposed a look into Hacienda's financials back on Monday. This audit right here, conducted in 2016, was for the 2014 physical year of Hacienda Healthcare, ordered by Tim Jeffries, then director of DES, but raising many red flags here, even concerns of fraud listed in this audit. And that is why the state wanted Hacienda closed. We'd had enough. That's how Jeffries describes his feeling toward dealing with Hacienda back in 2016. Enough of the negative interactions and the certainty of fraud. He wanted them shut down. I was rightfully concerned, intermittently panicked about the care of, of, of these dear developmentally disabled people. A look at the audit solidifies those concerns, showing that Hacienda appeared to be over budgeting and over billing the state, not using taxpayer dollars appropriately. Hacienda claims its average cost per client was $386,000, nearly three times as much as the average cost per client at similar facilities. <laughs> And vehicles used by Hacienda had reported mileage that would mean on average each ICF client would have traveled over 3,000 miles per year, enough to cross Arizona east to west 10 times a year. Maybe there are Arizonans who cross the state 10 times in a year but it is not developmentally disabled clients. Hacienda CEO Bill Timmons was a terror to deal with, said Jeffries, and refused to provide supporting documentation and source information to help the audit, and would not provide Jeffries' team with information for years other than 2014 data. When we dug into 2014 data, we didn't have to dig in deeply to see that millions of dollars had been at a minimum misallocated at a maximum fraudulently built. The audit clearly shows over $4 million of fraudulent money found just in that one year. Ultimately, the attorney general got involved and opened a criminal investigation. That investigation, according to Jeffries, was punted to a civil matter, and after his departure from DES, all their work into Hacienda stopped. Now, a lot of people to be held accountable here. We also have reached out to Phoenix police on how their investigation is going and what's happening with the DNA testing. We have not yet heard back again. Danielle, tomorrow we know for the first time we'll be hearing from Hacienda. Mm -hmm. We're just waiting on a location and a time for that news briefing. It'll be interesting to hear what they have to say about all of this that we've uncovered, especially in this last week. So yeah. thank you, John, for that. Of course, a lot of moving parts to this big story. If you would like to catch up and stay up to date, we do have a special page on our website where you can find all of our stories related to this. Just head to abc15.com slash Hacienda.